The Dead Hand The Cold War saw some of the greatest technological achievements of the modern age as things like GPS were invented. Humans also went to the moon, started a war for superiority between the United States of America and the Soviet Union, and this in turn allowed technology to jump way ahead. The Soviets went so far that they developed a doomsday device. The Soviets came up with a mechanism that resembled something straight out of a spy movie. They called it the Dead Hand, a doomsday machine that would automatically launch their entire stock of nuclear weapons without any need for a person pushing a button. There's no official number for how many nuclear weapons Russia currently has in their arsenal. However, estimates place that number at around 1,600. Then there are the 2,400 strategic nuclear weapons that they have strapped to ballistic missiles. Russia is without a doubt one of the largest nuclear powers on the planet, and these weapons are tied into a system known as Perimeter. Perimeter is able to launch the entire stockpile of Russian nuclear weapons in response to an attack. Under ordinary circumstances, somebody in the government or military would need to activate the system. It was part of the whole Cold War promise of mutually assured destruction if anyone thought they could harm anyone else. Even if one side struck first, Perimeter could be activated to ensure nobody on either side survived. In the West, the system is known as Dead Hand. While not 100% confirmed, the theory around Dead Hand is that it has extremely sensitive measuring instruments that pick up things like military frequencies and radiation levels. The system can detect air pressure and heat, along with seismic disturbances. If everything points to a nuclear attack, Perimeter, aka Dead Hand, will fire all of Russia's nukes. The system went online in 1985, and although the Soviet Union never confirmed that they'd created a doomsday device, it's fairly well known now. Multiple strategic force commanders in Russia have confirmed its existence, and in 2011, General Sergei Karakiev said nukes could destroy the US in about 30 minutes. And now for number 8. But first I wanted to give a big shout out to Rich Raz, Brett Venice and Mrs. Venice. Thanks so much for watching and supporting OE. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Skynet Nobody knows if the National Security Agency was trying to be funny or ironic when they named their AI surveillance program Skynet, but they did and it's already killed people. Skynet is the name of the robotics company in the Terminator franchise that caused the end of the world by replacing humans with machines. But in the real world, Skynet is a surveillance program established by the NSA that performs a wide variety of tasks. More specifically though, Skynet uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify terrorists. In Pakistan, Skynet is used to comb through the mobile phone network. Skynet engages in what's being described as mass surveillance, looking through the metadata of 55 million people and rating each individual on their likelihood of being a terrorist. Then that data is used to murder people. Since 2004, there have been somewhere between 2,500 and 4,000 people killed in drone strikes in Pakistan. Most of these individuals were classified as extremists by the US government. They were labeled extremists because of the Skynet program, which is believed to have gone into development as early as 2007. The issue is that many scientists say the program is getting innocent people killed. Patrick Ball, a specialist in data science and the director of the Human Rights Data Analysis Group, said Skynet is scientifically unsound. The exact details of the program aren't known among the public. Skynet doesn't appear to be on the edge of destroying humanity yet. But it's this exact technology that many fear could eventually program the extermination of humankind. Microwave Weapons China and Russia are believed to have developed microwave weapons that can damage the human brain without anyone knowing they've been fired. The US made their own version in 2004 and it was codenamed Medusa. The weapon the US built was small enough to fit in a car, but powerful enough to cause an incapacitating effect on the target with a low probability of fatality. Nobody knows what happened after the prototype though as it was allegedly shelved. The US abandoned the technology due to considerations involving unethical human experimentation. 
But according to James Giordano, a professor of neurology at Georgetown University Medical Center, other nations continued their research. James was one of the scientists that were brought in by the government in 2016 to investigate two dozen U.S. diplomats who got sick in Havana. The diplomats suffered from what's now been labeled Havana Syndrome. Additionally, U.S. diplomats and intelligence officers suffered from the syndrome again two years later in China, and in total, around 130 U.S. officials in the last few years have suffered from Havana Syndrome. The syndrome's symptoms include nausea, dizziness, and headaches. Some of these effects are debilitating and have completely ruined lives. What's really shocking, though, is that most of the incidents have involved officials, with some falling sick in broad daylight in Washington. It was only recently that scientists finally concluded that the symptoms were likely caused by directed pulse radio frequency energy. In other words, these diplomats were hit with a microwave weapon. It's something small and portable that fires invisibly and disrupts the human brain. Or, to put it simply, the weapon sends a pulse that travels through the brain and damages soft tissue, causing debilitating symptoms like the ones we mentioned before. Everything surrounding this weapon is top secret. Nobody knows exactly what's going on, and even James Giordano wasn't able to give specific details. But the one thing that's becoming clear is that microwave weapons are being used to destroy the brains of U.S. diplomats on American soil. Mass Mind Control In the 1970s, neuropsychologist Robert Heath from Tulane University tried to cure a man of his homosexuality by attaching electrodes to his brain and stimulating his pleasure sector. And around that same time, Spanish neuroscientist Jose Delgado used brain stimulation to understand how certain behaviors are triggered in the brain. Jose used a radio-controlled device linked to energizing electrodes implanted in human brains to control the individual's movements. He could push a button to alter their thoughts, bring forth memories, and even push a person into a blind rage. Delgado believed that through his device, it would be possible to start what he called a psycho-civilized society. Delgado believed that humans could have implants put in their brains, all linked to a master switch that prevented any deviant or unwanted behavior. It sounds like an episode of Black Mirror, but this is real science that's been around for over 50 years. Scientists already know that human behavior can be manipulated by simple electrodes implanted inside the brain. Remember in The Matrix when Neo learned Kung Fu by having it uploaded into his brain? Well, the military is doing that exact same thing right now. The military is using brain stimulation devices to speed learning and enhance cognitive performance, specifically in pilots. Basically, they're using electricity in the brain to make soldiers learn faster and to make pilots fly better. There's no official mind control device that the public knows about, but it's important to be aware that this science exists and can be used for mind control. It's hard to picture, but there could be a day in the future where people's behavior is altered with a flick of a switch. Do you think there are people who exist in the world right now being controlled by these brain stimulation devices? Perhaps even in positions of power? Let us know in the comments down below, and while you're at it, subscribe to the channel! The Cobalt Bomb Right now, China may be creating one of the deadliest weapons to ever be thought into existence. During the Cold War, the Soviets had plans to create something known as a salted bomb or a cobalt bomb. It's a type of nuclear weapon that's so devastating that the fact that China might currently be building one is mind-boggling. The device is designed specifically to cause as much misery as possible. Unlike a traditional dirty atomic bomb like the one used on Hiroshima in 1945, a salted bomb focuses on radioactive fallout. This bomb isn't about explosive force, it's about creating a cloud of radioactive material that poisons a vast area. The term salted bomb comes from the phrase to salt the earth, which means to make an area inhospitable to human life. The science behind the salted bomb is fairly straightforward. To increase the radioactive destruction, heavy metals can be added to the atomic bomb. Metals like cobalt and gold ensure that the explosive sends high-energy neutrons outward, contaminating massive areas of land. Maybe the bomb wouldn't destroy a city, but it would definitely poison the soil for hundreds or even thousands of miles. The idea was first proposed by mad scientist Leo Szilard during the Cold War. He was one of the scientists who worked on the Manhattan Project alongside legendary genius Albert Einstein. The bomb was never officially built, but now there are rumors that China is in the midst of creating one. 
Scientists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences recently announced that they successfully fired superheated beams of tantalum, one of the isotopes needed to create a salted bomb. They didn't admit to building a nuclear weapon, but it's certainly the same science. Project Pluto Project Pluto was put into action under the supervision of the U.S. Air Force during the Cold War. The project was responsible for developing the supersonic low-altitude missile, which is also known as SLAM for short. SLAM was a unique nuclear rocket that utilized nuclear propulsion. Nuclear propulsion is a way to propel a rocket to insanely fast speeds. The SLAM missile would be able to fly for 113,000 miles before it ran out of fuel. It would have no range limit and would be able to fly around the entire globe 4.5 times. The issue with the missile is that it would use an unshielded nuclear reactor. After the missile was launched, the reactor would rain down nuclear radiation as it flew across the sky. It would be even worse than a salted bomb because the SLAM missile could rain radiation down across the entire planet as it looped the globe. The SLAM missile wasn't designed to simply explode upon impact. It would be equipped with 16 hydrogen bombs that it could drop as it flew. The final strike, due to its longevity, could be days after it was first launched. A single SLAM rocket could drop hydrogen bombs on 16 countries, all while raining toxic radiation across half the planet. Ultimately, though, Project Pluto was cancelled because the SLAM missile was way too deadly to use. The nuclear propulsion system was tested for only five minutes in 1961 on a train car, and it produced a whopping 513 megawatts of power. That equaled 35,000 pounds of thrust, which is significantly more than an F-16 fighter jet. Tectonic Weapons Tragedy recently struck Turkey and Syria in the form of earthquakes, and according to some conspiracy theorists, a secret tectonic weapon was behind the destruction. The conspiracy says that it was the American's HARP research facility near Alaska that caused the earthquakes, and they used an extremely powerful high-frequency transmitter to cause the damage. The theorists believe that scientists at the HARP facility have the power to summon lightning storms by manipulating the atmosphere. They also believe that they're in possession of a weapon that can create an earthquake. The truth is that the high-frequency active auroral research program or HARP was constructed in the 1990s to study the Earth's atmosphere. It's currently under the supervision of scientists with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Officially, the facility uses special transmitters to disrupt the ionosphere to create beneficial communication and surveillance environments. But they shouldn't be in possession of any earthquake-creating technology. However, it could be out there. In the 1990s, Russian documents leaked plans by the Soviet Union to develop a tectonic weapon. Two research programs, one codenamed Mercury and the other codenamed Volcano, were established to figure out how to stimulate artificial earthquakes as a means of mass destruction. The scientists looked into how to use underground nuclear explosions to trigger earthquakes. It's unclear how far they got with their research, but the leaked documents prove that they were looking into it. The US looked into it as well from the 1960s to the 1980s, but their tests were supposedly unsuccessful. The indisputable truth is that tectonic weapons could exist and could potentially be used to destroy entire cities. Botulism Bombs Bioweapons are never used for a good reason. They're scary and inhumane, and one of the worst bioweapons ever developed is the botulism bomb. A single gram of the substance that causes botulism is able to kill about a million people, and very easily. In the 1950s, the US discovered an extremely lethal strain of botulism during biological warfare research. Even after Nixon banned biological warfare in 1969, the CIA continued to keep 5 grams of Clostridium botulinum just in case. And what's scary is that it was enough to wipe out at least 5 million people. But that's nothing compared to Iraq. In 1986, the Americans sold five different variants of botulinum to the University of Baghdad. The Iraqis then went about creating what's believed to be the most devastating arsenal of biological weapons in the world. It's currently estimated that Iraq is in possession of 1,000 bombs filled with botulinum. When the Gulf War started, Saddam Hussein personally had around 19,000 gallons of the botulinum toxin. And although none of these weapons have ever been deployed, they have the potential to wipe out an entire civilization. Tsar Bomber 
The nuclear arms race reached its peak on October 30, 1961, with the detonation of the largest and most powerful nuclear weapon ever built. Almost 20 years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Soviets detonated a device of unimaginable power. In the Arctic Circle at a remote place called Seveny Island, Russia unleashed the devastating Tsar bomber. The bomb was 26 feet long and weighed 60,000 pounds. The device was delivered by a Tupolev Tu-95 bomber, and it was dropped from an altitude of 34,000 feet. It was attached to a parachute to slow its descent, then it was detonated at 13,000 feet above the surface. The bomber would be 30 miles away by the time the detonation occurred, yet the crew was told that they only had a 50% chance of survival. They narrowly escaped with their lives as the Tsar bomber exploded with 1,570 times more power than the combined force of both bombs dropped in Japan in 1945. Its yield was 50 megatons, which is astonishing, but the original plan was for 100 megatons. The only reason the radioactive fallout didn't destroy half the world was because the bomb's fireball was pushed upward by the force of its own shockwave, when it exploded mid-air. To this day, the Tsar bomber was the biggest bomb that ever exploded. What do you think will be the next devastating weapon unleashed on humanity? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.